and establish thy justice among men and nations. Amen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next episode, a special episode of Real History. I am your host, Jared Frederick, and today I am joined by several of my fellow reenacting comrades who likewise go out and depict the history of the Second World War via living history. What we are doing this weekend on the grounds of the Pennsylvania Military Museum is that we are observing the 77th anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge. And while we have this nice historical ambience as we're sitting here uh, right underneath a Sherman tank from the war years, we thought now would be an ideal opportunity to discuss good movies that depict the Battle of the Bulge and also bad movies that depict the Battle of the Bulge. So I'm joined here today by Jonathan, Ethan, and Josh. So we're going to go ahead and get started out with the good before we get to the bad and the ugly. So first up, Jonathan, what is in your mind one of the better depictions of the Battle of the Bulge and why? A uh, better depiction of Battle of the Bulge would be uh, uh, Band of Brothers, specifically looking at um, the layout of the fields, the fact that they describe the, the lines as so scattered and so thin that anybody could walk through and um, they picked up a lot of prisoners that way so that was pretty cool okay good perspective Ethan the good um, for a good depiction of the Battle of the Bulge uh, I would also say the series Band of Brothers uh, and more specifically the scenes shot in uh, the city of Bastogne from the perspective of Eugene Rowe the medic uh, attached to Easy Company and specifically the depictions of wounded soldiers who were unable to be evacuated from the ad hoc field hospital, which was set in a church um, in the city. And just the direness of the situation the GIs were in, the inability to evacuate the casualties, shortage of medical supplies. Uh, it's often not something depicted in war movies where the battles the GIs are involved in are often glorified. Um, this showed you um, a close look at how awful things were for the wounded GIs in that uh, particular battle. Um, and the hardship they faced. Josh, a good one. Uh, the good movie that I picked was A Midnight Clear. I think A Midnight Clear does a really good job at not only portraying some of the harth, harsh weather conditions uh, that occurred during the Battle of the Bulge, but I also think it does a really good job at uh, really portraying what uh, the, the troops were feeling uh, prior to um, that battle, in particular uh, the one character called Mother who was experiencing very bad shell shock. I also think it did a really good job at portraying uh, some of the skeleton crews going into the battle. Mm -hmm. And kind of a lesser known independent drama as well, so mm -hmm. perhaps one that our viewers aren't as familiar with. Yeah. So, good choices all around. I would have to say that my favorite Battle of the Bulge movie is the 1949 film Battleground. And I know Ethan is an aficionado of that one too. And uh, it likewise looks at the 101st Airborne during Bastogne. But uh, it's all original gear. A lot of the actors in it are, you know, actual veterans of the Second World War. And there's just a, a degree of authenticity, thanks in no small part to the fact that the screenwriter himself was a veteran of the Battle of the Bulge. All right, so those are some of the better ones. Let's get to the ones that are. Uh, perhaps uh, less efficient in that regard. So Jonathan, what is a bad depiction Absolutely of the Battle of the Bulge? Absolutely terrible depiction of the Battle of the Bulge is a movie of the same name, Battle of the Bulge from I think 1965. Yes. Um, it was a film that was claimed to be accurate by the director himself and it was so terrible that uh, now former President Eisenhower had to come out of retirement and apologize for it. So um, more so condemn it rather than apologize. Yeah, not even apologize, but say it's, it's it wasn't good. We're talking uh, yeah. Chaffee's is the main battle tank for the Americans, and Patton's mm -hmm. painted gray for uh, the tigers of the German army. So and they filmed it in Spain, and there's like a dusting of snow in some of the scenes. And sometimes it's, it looks like it's filmed in North Africa rather than than in the Ardennes. So. Definitely a bad one, and it had so much potential too because it was directed by one of the same directors as The Longest Day. Like, where did it go wrong? <laughs> it really, really went wrong. So, Ethan, a bad one. Um, particularly bad movie um, covering the Battle of the Bulge, I would say would be the movie Saints and Soldiers. 
Um, first reason I can think of why I would consider it a bad movie is um, uh, in Hollywood, war movies, um, aspects of the war are dramatized for the sake of entertainment. I believe the entire storyline of the movie was over dramatized. I too few soldiers involved in too heavy of fighting, um, somewhat cliche and comical um, interactions with a French partisan or a Belgian partisan. I can't remember which he was, but... It's an RAF pilot, too. They, uh, <laughs> yes, that's right. There's also an RAF pilot. Um, it, it was just too, not comical, but too, too Hollywood mm. uh, for my taste in terms of the storyline. Um, for the time that it was made, too, it's a fairly modern movie. Special effects weren't that great. Um, the budget for the movie somewhat showed. Um, and all around, I think it's just not a fair depiction of the Battle of the Bulge, and it doesn't do um, a just service to the men who actually fought there. Um, and the movie starts out with the Malmody Massacre. Of course, of course. Uh, but it shows soldiers of the 101st Airborne Division being among those who of were course. killed in the Malmody Massacre. Yes, and, and of course, they were not, they were not anywhere present. near that, that vicinity, and so no. there are many, many liberties that are taken. All right, Josh? Your negative one. My negative one is the same as my good one, which is uh, Midnight Clear. And the reason why I think that Midnight Clear doesn't do a good job at portraying uh, the Battle of the Bulge is because uh, for one of the same reasons that Ethan had mentioned in Saints and Soldiers is that there was uh, very small units in such a very big conflict that it, it's very hard to understand just how significant the battle was. Um, the only Germans that you see in the uh, in the movie are about six or seven Germans, um, and the real life um, example that this movie was based on uh, it was a whole platoon. And uh, some of the uh, some of the technology that they were using in the movie as well were like things that didn't come out until the post-war years. So there we have it, the good, the bad, and the ugly of how the Battle of the Bulge has been depicted on the big screen and the small screen over the years. We hope this uh, mini episode of Real History has been different, enjoyable, and enlightening. And of course, we thank our guest panelists for offering their opinions and expertise. So until next time, we'll see you on Real History.